Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jaden. And we're from the UCL HKU dual degree in law. Currently we're year threes on the dual degree. That means we've done two years at UCL and we've just finished year one of HKU. And hopefully today we'll get to share many things about the degree, including things like core structure, extracurriculars, differences between the unis, and most importantly, things we think you need to know before applying for the dual degree. So for me, because I've studied in the UK before, I was quite interested in learning the law in both countries. And so when I came across the dual degree, I thought it was very helpful to learn about jurisdictions, not just limited to one. I think it was also quite helpful to not limit your career options. And also, even in the future, when you're undecided about what's work, you have a bit of a broader range of options. Yeah, I had a bit of a similar background, I'd say. I also studied in an international school growing up, so I always had that strong curiosity about what it would be like to study overseas. But at the same time, I knew that I did want to practice in Hong Kong in the future because I had family here and Hong Kong does have a very strong and established legal system. So I thought, you know, the dual degree would be a really strong opportunity to get a chance to really participate and learn at two of the top institutions in both the UK and both Hong Kong as well. It's one of the really strong advantages of the dual degree. It allows you to get two separate LLBs from both universities, one from UCL and one from HKU, condensing three years of a normal LLB at UCL and a normal four years LLB at HKU into one four-year dual degree. Now, the advantage of having such a dual degree is that you can practice in both jurisdictions, Hong Kong and the UK. Whilst normally, if you have an overseas law degree but you want to practice in Hong Kong, you would have to take something called conversion examinations. Having two separate LLBs means you don't have to take conversion exams, and in my opinion, also makes you more well equipped to practice as a lawyer in Hong Kong in the future as well. Our first two years are spent in London, where we have a mix of array of the core law electives, such as criminal law, tort law, and we learn the basics of it all. In terms of teaching, we're very actively encouraged to participate in class and also to really come prepared before we go. This is quite similar to the HKU method, where we also have lectures and tutorials, and we also want to engage with other students. So in terms of the workload, I would say for UCL, it's pretty evenly balanced because we only have four modules for the whole year. And then because it's spread out, for example, tutorials are only once every two weeks, then you really get the time in between to sometimes relax and also to catch up on any work. Now the interesting thing about coming to HKU is whilst at UCL year one and year two, you don't get to choose any of your subjects and you go through the basics like Rachel mentioned. Here at HKU, you start to branch out a bit more and you get to choose different electives, different law electives and get to explore really the different areas of law and find your own niches. HKU I think also runs on a very similar lecture tutorial sort of format, but some classes do allow for seminars, which are longer types of classes with three hours in length which really allows you to explore more in depth, different courses and different types of learning as well. So when we were in London, there was a lot of societies you could pick from, and especially when you would be living in the city as well. So I lived in halls, and then when we moved in, we were with a lot of other year ones, and you got to really mingle and meet a lot of people from all over the world, which was one aspect that I really enjoyed. And from societies, you can pick um, social societies, sports societies, and I think UCL was very accommodating in allowing people to pick a whole range, and you get to pick your commitments as well. So there are lower level commitments for sports or social teams, or higher ones where you get to compete and um, engage in higher level national competitions. Yeah, I think UCL, the really good advantage that has going for it is it's a really large school, one of the largest in London, mm -hmm. with over 40,000 students. And what that means is, there are societies for pretty much anything you can imagine to exist. So in my second year, when I personally went over to London, I was in you know, the gaming society. I did national gaming competitions in Overwatch and CSGO. I also did badminton, volleyball, and really tried a lot of different things at UCL. Meanwhile, at HKU, HKU also has lots of different societies and a vibrant hall life, which Rachel can probably talk about later. Before HKU, I've also gotten involved in things like the Peer Impact Network, where I'm helping students with special educational needs, and also got training in audio description to help with campus services as well.
First, we would say that really think about whether the subjects you're doing now at A-level or in any secondary school, which kind of subjects are you enjoying? Is it essay-based? Is it science, maths? It would really help if you re you're someone who really likes reading and also writing a lot of essays. Because similarly in law, we would have to do a lot of readings and a majority of ass assessments is based on essay writing and also how well you can interpret a set of facts and applying it in a certain scenario. So we would say that that type of interest and skill set would really benefit you in a law degree. Lastly, we would say that the biggest piece of advice is to prepare before you actually apply to the program, to familiarize yourself with the requirements and also what exactly this degree entails. So for example, in UCL, as I've mentioned, because you do less courses and you don't, you, you're just given a timetable in order to subscribe and you just have to go to class, it's a lot less preparation. However, when you transition back to the HKU for your last two years, you would have to pick a lot of elective, your common core subjects, as well as what exactly do you want outside of your law degree. We would say that because of this preparation, that it would be very crucial for you to know from the beginning and kind of plan out your degree in, as a whole. And I think one of the important things to keep in mind is, I think there's a really strong misconception that goes around, this stereotype that law is all about memorization, about you know memorizing all the big textbooks, but actually in recent years, many universities are taking much more open approach with open book exams, where what they're really trying to look at is critical thinking and application. So if you are considering a law degree, make sure to start thinking about different issues. Don't just Google it or ask GPT, but try to form your own views on something before you try to double check with what online sources really say. And I think that's the strongest indicator that will help you know whether a law degree is for you and help you get into degrees like law as well. The dual degree is built on a really strong reputation in Hong Kong amongst employers, legal industry, and so it's a really, really reputable degree, and I'm sure you'll find it rewarding if you ever do make it to it. So hopefully that'll inspire you to apply to the dual degree, and if you ever make it, make sure to do say hi if you ever meet us in person.